we've been working on a couple different things. You can kind of think of Ripple as split into two pieces that we call Ripple Net and Ripple X. The Ripple Net side is like software for banks. And what we're looking at is what can we provide to banks that solves real problems they have and that leverage like things that Ripple has. So previously, our pitch to banks has been like, we'll make your fiat payments better. One of the things that we have is we have software that's right in the transaction processing of you know more than 100 banks. One of the things that we've been big about is preventing banks from having to pre-place funds where they need them. And so one of the things that, that can help avoid having to pre-place funds is short-term loans. Another thing we've looked at is like, how can we draw on all of the liquidity in the cryptocurrency space in a way that's useful to banks that might be experimenting with cryptocurrency. And so now we're thinking, well, banks and, and, and companies adjacent to banks, like companies deciding to put Bitcoin on their balance sheet, for example, are now starting to do things like with cryptocurrencies. So now we can have to go back to those and say, look, you want to accept payments in cryptocurrencies, but you want to hold them in fiat, or you need to make outbound payments. Like we can adapt that better by drawing on the liquidity, by using our expertise of plugging into sort of like the boundaries between the cryptocurrency and the fiat payment space. Or we have an agreement with an exchange that does the last mile of payment. So let us offer that to you as a service. So that's kind of what we've been thinking of, like what leverages our strengths as a company that provides our customers on the Ripple Net side with like solutions to problems that they actually have. On the Ripple X side, which is kind of like everything else in the sort of open source space, we've been working a lot on federating ledgers, on, on connections between ledgers. That it will do a lot of things. So number one, if you want a DeFi strategy, like you need a blockchain to do that on. Like, and if you try to build it into the same blockchain that's doing payments, the blockchain becomes much bigger and slower and it raises costs. Like if you saw with Ethereum, you know, transaction fees have gotten between 150 and 500 dollars. You putting everything at the same base layer doesn't work very well. Horizontal scalability is what the rest of the world uses. If Visa needs to process more transactions, they just add another transaction processor. Mm -hmm. Like that's what you could do with federated sidechains. Uh, the other thing that we've been looking at is NFTs. Uh, we to Wind, for example, has a proposal for a sort of, he, he rather brilliantly came up with a proposal for NFTs that requires no changes to the XRP ledger, but it, you kind of have to pretend things are NFTs rather than it natively supporting them. What's nice about it is it doesn't require any changes, but it's not really a sort of embracing of NFTs. And so then the thing is like, well, what are the problems that NFTs are going to solve? So we've been looking uh, you know, into there, into that to figure out what are the real problems that NFTs solve.